Okay, we're looking at the, at the feasts. There are seven feasts. We're looking to, today at the first four. They happen around March, April. Okay, they start there. Passover, we just looked at that. Jesus fulfilled that. He became our Passover lamb. We're now looking at the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Leavening deals with sin, so they were to eat unleavened bread, meaning sinless. Okay? We can see this because Paul said to us, he said, how can you who have died to sin still live in it? Okay? That's one thing. Uh, number two, it's, it's a perpetual um, uh, feast in Exodus 12, 14. Uh, 14, it says, Now this day will be a memorial to you, and you shall celebrate it as a feast of the Lord. Throughout your generations, you are to celebrate it as a permanent ordinance. Okay? So the Feast of Unleavened Bread, how does this affect us? It affects us because Jesus fulfilled this feast also. Okay? Where we talk about... Um, uh, and and uh, in the in the same scripture that we talked about a second ago about Christ our Passover, in First Corinthians five, it says your boasting is not good. Do not do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough? Clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump, just as you are in fact unleavened. Unleavened is unsin, so to speak. So sinless. All right, that's the way we should be. That's what, that's what should be. And so Christ fulfilled this by, by coming to Him. His blood covers us, and we, in essence, are sinless. We are unleavened. It's no longer there. The Bible says the old things have passed away. Everything's become new. Okay? We are new creatures in Christ. Um, and because of that, that's why we have the ability to come into the presence of God. Because sin doesn't come into the presence of God. Sinlessness does. Unleavenedness, if I can say that, does. And, and Hebrews says, therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which He inaugurated for us through the veil, that is His flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Our heart and our bodies are covered by the blood of Jesus. And Jesus, so Jesus fulfilled this covenant, what does it mean to us? Unleavened bread, the Feast of Unleavened Bread deals with sinlessness. Okay? It's a state that we are to be, a sinless state. That is something for us to work toward. We are no longer sinners saved by grace. You're not that. You've already been saved by grace, so therefore you are a new creature in Christ. You are a child of God. You're not a sinner. We have to learn to walk in that. And I don't mean that pride or arrogantly or anything else. I'm just saying what the Bible tells us is that we are no longer sinners. We are children of God. Okay. All right. Now, right in there too, and it happens the day after the uh, Sabbath that comes during this seven-day period. There's an offering of first fruit. Leviticus 23 tells us, um, when they enter the land which I'm going to give you and reap its harvest, then they shall bring a sheaf of first fruits. Okay, first fruits. Um, the idea of first fruits is not new to Israel. Israel understands first, first fruits. Um, in Leviticus 23, 14, it says, Until this same day, until you have brought in the offering of your God, you shall eat neither bread nor roasted grain nor new growth. It is to be a perpetual statute. So all three of these now are perpetual forever. Okay? First fruits is something that represents resurrection and salvation. Okay? Several things happen in the, in the Jewish calendar 
that they believe happened on this day. Number one is Noah's Ark rests on Mount Ararat. Okay? In a sense, you can say the resurrection of the human race and the salvation of the human race through that. Israel crossed the Red Sea on the day of first fruits. Israel eats the first fruits of the promised land on the day of first fruits. Haman is defeated on the on the day of first fruits. All these things, all these things happened. Um, and 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 Yeshua, Jesus is resurrected on this day. Uh, it happened be, just just the way the Jewish calendar is set up. He was resurrected the third day after Passover. Okay, and that which happened to be the Sunday after the Sabbath. Okay, so all these things happen. It, 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 because of that, then, then we can kind of see that, that first fruits deals with resurrection and salvation. We can see this in who Jesus is. He is the firstborn. First fruits, firstborn. Jesus is the first begotten of God. Hebrews 1 6 says, and when and when he again brings the first fruits into the world, he says, and let all the angels of God worship him. Okay, the, when he brings the firstborn into the world. So he is a firstborn of God. Uh, Jesus is the firstborn of every cre creature. Colossians 1.15, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Yeshua is also the first begotten from the dead, the first to be resurrected, to rise again. Revelations 1, 5, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of all the kings of the earth. Okay? So, um, uh, he is also the firstborn of many brethren, Romans 8, 8, 29. Now, what does this mean to us? It means that Jesus has also fulfilled this feast. And uh, again, in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 20, and now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. So he is the first, all right? He is the first fruits. And so Jesus is the first to be resurrected. So he becomes the first fruit and he fulfills this feast. So Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits he has fulfilled. All three of those happen in, 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 a, in, in a clump, kind of at the same time. They start the 15th of Nisan. Now, there's a feast that comes up a little bit later, about three months later, and in Leviticus 23, verse 15, it says, And you shall also count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, from the day when you brought in the sheaf, uh, of the wave offering, there shall be seven complete Sabbaths. So seven times seven, 49. You shall count 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath, and then you shall present a new grain offering. This deals with the, um, uh, the what's called the Feast of Weeks or um, uh, Shavuot, which we daringly call Pentecost. Pentecost, penta, meaning 50. Okay, so the Hebrew is Shavuot. It deals with new revelation. Okay, new revelation. Uh, on this day, the Ten Commandments, on Pentecost, the Ten Commandments were given. Well, Neil, how do you know that? Well, if you look at Exodus 19, it says, And in the third month after the sons of Israel had gone out of the land, so that's, that's the third month is, is um, uh, 50 days after uh, Passover. So, oh, oh, oh well, let, well, let me finish that. Gone to the land of Egypt. On that very day, they came to the wilderness of Sinai. And when they set out from Raphadim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. And there Israel camped in front of the mountain. 19 leads into 20. 20 is where God gives the Ten Commandments. 
As a matter of fact, it's God not only, it's God that gave it and uh, he wrote it with his finger, okay? All right, so that's the Ten Commandments. Acts 2, it says, On the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues of fire distributing, and all were filled with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit was given on Pentecost. The Ten Commandments were, were given on Pentecost. Uh, and there are some significant uh, uh, parallels between the, uh, between the two uh, giving of the Ten Commandments and, and the giving of the Holy Spirit. Again, we see Christ fulfilled Pentecost by giving the Holy Spirit. So these four, these four, Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, and Pentecost have all been fulfilled by Jesus. There are three more coming. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. If Jesus has fulfilled the first four, isn't it obvious that He's going to fulfill the last three? The first four will, were fulfilled at His first coming. The last three will deal with His second coming, and that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at this and how it ties in with His second coming and our resurrection. Okay, let's see what happens with these three feasts. The first three, the first four dealt with our salvation, our sinless state, uh, new creation or resurrection, and, and, and the Holy Spirit. Let's see what these last three deal with as we look at them over the next three weeks, okay? Father, go out, touch lives, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, have a great week, and I'll see you next time.